사람들은 누구나 오늘보다 더 나은 미래를 원합니다. Oh, whoever they are, people want a better future than what they have now. 오늘 지금보다 더 나은 미래를 만들려면 But in order to make a future that is better than right now, 네, 설계도를 바꿔야 됩니다. Then you have to change the blueprint. 네, 마음의 마인드를 바꿔야 된다. It means that you have to change the mind that is of the heart. Nice to meet you. I'm really thankful, and also it's my honor that I could be together with you with this presentation and this afternoon. Uh, the the lecture that I prepared uh, today is um, titled "The Desire." As a matter of fact, and the IYF United States chapter has this. Um, 32 lectures of series of mind health education. Uh, these lectures are uh, registered and approved by the Department of Education of New York State. And it's being um, like uh, adopted and uh, implemented in uh, different 19 schools and also some part of it is also being presented in the New York uh, uh, Department Police as well. Uh, so it could be adapted into the correctional system. So among those uh, a series of 32 lectures, uh, there are three lectures of, uh, like with the theme of desire. The desire series is number one, two, three. Uh, I'm out of uh, three lectures about the desires, the nature of desire, what is the necessary thing, what is the point, what is the importance of the control of all these things. So I prepared this, uh, the third lecture uh, among the desire series. Uh, so I'd like to on this. So desire is basically uh, coming from a certain basic uh, needs that we want. Like I want to eat, I want to sleep, I want to enjoy, I want to have it, all these things. But we understand the negative aspects of desires. Our desires are all bad. But not always. As a matter of fact, this desire is necessary thing. What if a man doesn't have any desire to accomplish or do anything? We can feel that this person is a dead man, right? So desire is a necessary thing. But the point is, uh, knowing it and understanding it and controlling it, that is more important. So when you look at uh, the uranium, uh, the uranium as big as a, a fist can blow away entire city when it explodes at once, right? But when this desire, when this uh, nuclear fission is controlled, so it wouldn't happen at once suddenly. If you can like uh, be controlled so you can proceed little by little, little by little. If it happens under the control, then it becomes very efficient source of the power that can supply the energy to the entire city over the months. So desire is like that. So it is very important and the source of the energy that we can drive ourselves to accomplish certain meaningful things. 
important part is if it is being controlled or not. When it's not controlled, it destroys his own life and many other people as well. But when it is controlled, then it is the source of all the energy and the strength that uh, support our uh, all the activities to accomplish something meaningful. The desire series number two is about like, there's something that we need to understand. Not all the desires are out of ourselves. Some of the desires are coming in from outside. We are not aware that we are being controlled by somebody with a certain intention to drag us into a certain direction. Like, if I'm not, I'm not uh, like, uh, like personal to a certain businessman, but that is the nature of the business. If Mark Zuckerberg is having a like um, meeting in his boardroom with his executives on Facebook, Will he discuss about how can we keep these children to not stay, not to be obsessed too much inside this Facebook? Will they talk about that kind of things? Or they will be discussing about how they can hold everyone that comes into the Facebook, lose the track of time and, and stay within the Facebook as long as possible. How can you make them be addicted and stay inside Facebook? They will think of that kind of things. So they will devise a lot of things that will catch our eyes and hold us and like uh, keep us inside so they can accomplish a certain purpose of their business through uh, these people that they hold inside the system. Video game is also like that. Normally I heard that in order to develop a certain video game like lineage or something like that, then about 100 persons of uh, specialists are gathering and they have to work for like uh, two years so people may find it really fun and enjoyable. And once they start it, they should lose the track of time. They should continuously play that game. And in order to make it like that, they have to spend minimum $5 million to develop it. But in order to promote that game, they have to spend another 10 million to promote the games. So in order to develop and put that game into the market, they have to spend minimum $15 million US dollars. And they are going to make it easy for the students to stop it after playing one hour, two hour, oh, it's time for me to do homework, I have to stop it. They will make it very easy for the youngsters to stop in the middle of the game, right? No, 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 they cannot afford it. Once they make it, they will make it really very hard to think of getting out of this game. So they already designed it like that. So we are living in the world that will catch our attention and draw our attention and let us be controlled by them in order to accomplish their goal of their business. So putting a lot of things into the people, any television advertisement is also designed like that. They spend very expensive costs to make 
20 second, 20 second advertisement on the television. So this 20 second advertise on the television, people still cannot wait to watch all this 20 second advertisement. So they are easily ready to um, change the channel. So they know unless they catch the, the watcher's attention within two seconds, they are going to lose attention of this, the, the, the household people. So they are thinking of how we can catch the eyes and attention of these people who are watching this television. And there are flood of advertisement. So we are living in the middle of this flood of all different kinds of things that wants to steal our attention and keep our heart away from what we really want. But interesting thing, important thing is, we normally are not aware that it is being uh, controlled from somebody else. We normally uh, like condemn ourselves. We normally accuse ourselves. <sighs> why, did I, why did I do it? Why couldn't I stop it? Why am I so foolish? <sighs> why did I do it? But when we realize, when we start to realize it came from somewhere outside, then we will know uh, where to find the answer. Instead of just accusing myself, ah, oh, then we need to control this channel, how these things are coming in. Ah, oh, if it is coming from outside, then rather than looking for answer from myself, we need to find a solution that can help me from outside of me as well, like that. So desire series number two is about uh, where and with what intention many of these desires are coming in. Because that desire number one and number two is to talk about, in fact, the number three. If what we are chasing after, what we really are struggling to obtain and keep for ourselves are not what we really want. Many of the case, a lot of youngsters are struggling to get something or enjoy something, have something. And they are miserable because they couldn't get everything they want. But do you know, all those things are not what you really want. Then you have to ask questions. Then what is it that I really want? That is, in fact, the desire series number three. We need to think about what do I want? What do I really want? If there's one person whose lifetime wish is just a plate of sausage, won't you laugh? What is your lifetime wish? What is the ult one ultimate thing that you want for your life? A plate of sausage? What? <laughs> That's a nonsense. But there is a story. <coughs> a gentleman, uh, or elderly man who was living in a deep forest with his wife. It's a fairy tale. One day, he went out into the forest to chop some wood. That's his job. So while he was working in the forest, he found there was a tree that fell, but under the trunk, he saw a small fairy that was stuck and struggled. So this old gentleman saved the fairy, and this fairy was so thankful to the gentleman. So she told, sir, you saved my life. I give you three wishes that will come true, whatever you ask for. This gentleman was really, really happy. Yeah! So he stopped working that day. He came back home and he called his wife. Honey, honey, 
Today in the forest, I saved a fairy that was struggling under the trunk. And she gave me three wishes to come true. Really, honey? Yes, yes. All this suffering has finished. We are going to live happily ever after. By the way, honey, you should be hungry about now. I will prepare nice dinner for you today. After eating dinner, we'll sit at the table and we will make three wishes. That's a good idea. But when this grandmother was preparing for the dinner, she found out there was not such good uh, material to prepare dinner for her loving husband. So, so she was telling inside of her mind, I wish I could have a plate of sausage. So then, blah, 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 and a sausage came up on the table. And grandmother was also surprised. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> they both realized one of the wish was spent for a plate of sausage. And grandfather was upset. You old hog! How could you waste one of the, these precious three wishes for a plate of sausage? So they were, were I didn't know, I didn't, I just wanted to serve you with a, something better than what I had. And while they were quarreling, this grandfather was upset. Let this sausage be stuck to the nose of this grandmother. Then this sausage flew and stuck to the nose of this grandmother. Oh, then they both realized what happened again. My God. So they were trying to take out this sausage. It was not coming off, trying to cut off the sausage. And she was feeling pain, screaming. So finally, they had to end up spending the last of the three wishes. Okay, I want this sausage to come off the nose of my wife. So after spending their lifetime three wishes, what was left was a plate of sausage. Is it funny? <laughs> but as a matter of fact, if we ask this question to the people, okay, whatever you ask, whatever you really want is going to come true. Make a, tell me one wish you want. I would like you to ask yourself, what is the ultimate one wish you want to make? It's not easy to answer. One day I asked one of my friends who was working with Samsung Electronics in South Korea. I know what you are struggling with. What is your lifetime wish you want to make. And he was sitting down, looking down on the table for about five minutes. And he told me, I don't know what I want. Because I've been friend together with him a long time. I told him, I knew, I knew that was your answer. Anyway, about three years later, uh, he passed away. But when he passed away, he was really happy. That's a long, long story. But um, sometimes we need to ask these questions. Do I really want what I want? What is it that I really want? I would like to ask, especially those students, middle school students, high school students, because I have been struggling with that question long time. What should I do with my life? What should I live for, for throughout my life? I asked that question, but I couldn't answer to myself. Do I really want to be a millionaire? Good. Do I want a like supercar? 
What about being a movie star? Good. But being a doctor, nurse, what about being a teacher? Great musician? Good. But these things are, in fact, when we ask children, they, I want to be a president, I want to be a general in the army, I want to be a professor, I want to be a great scientist. But those are one of the like, like passages, one of the way that they could accomplish what they really want. But super car cannot be the ultimate wish of the life. Being a movie star cannot become ultimate purpose of the life, goal of the life. So rather than what, what is more important? For what? For what you want to become a millionaire? For what you want to become a doctor or movie star? For what you want to become a teacher? If anybody among us want to become a teacher because, yeah, if I become a teacher, I will be respected and I will, a uh, teacher is a very good job that is very stable um, and secured and I will be able to have a steady income that I could obtain some, um, yeah, a steady um house to live in and expenses to pay the bill and for my children's support. Um, yeah, that's why I'll, then most probably this person may become a corrupt teacher because being a teacher requires a lot of like kind of integrity instead of the heart and requires like teacher need to struggle with a lot of children that are giving trouble to many men then being a teacher just to become uh, successful and it's as a mean of the life then this person rather than caring the students this teacher will just focus on how i can bless myself how i can like um, exalt myself, I can secure my own interest. This, this teacher is already a corrupt teacher, right? Being a doctor, nurse, same thing. Many of the children, I want to become a doctor, I want to become a nurse, but being a good doctor is not easy. Being a good nurse is not easy. This world will not just leave us to become a good doctor. After studying seven years, eight years in the university, that they entered, passing through extreme competition, they start to work as an intern, resident in the you know, like a general hospital, and they realize they are not allowed, they are not able to uh, like handle the patients according to the way they believe that they had to. There was a manual. They had to follow the manual. Knowing that it is not necessary, they had to let these patients do this test, that test, this test, that test, that cost a lot. And they are not allowed to give the right prescriptions according to the conscience of the doctor. Because general hospital has to generate income and also protect themselves from the possible sue, lawsuit that may happen in the future. So there are a lot of dilemmas. So if a young man doesn't have clear objectives, why? Why do I want to become a doctor? Then many of the pure good youngsters end up becoming a corrupt doctor, corrupt nurse, shaking hands in the, with the, like, not everywhere, but that is what is going on out there in the world. We need to be ready for that. So 
important thing is we should know what we really, really want. If not, at the end of our life, when you have to face the moment that I have to wrap up, everything in our lives will be regret. That is what we need to be really, really afraid of. There are different, different institutes that, that made this research, but always, regardless of the institute, number one regret of dying people is always, I think I lived my life not doing what I really wanted, but doing what people expect me to do, just doing things just to show off to the other people, just to boast myself, just to feel the kind of expectation of the people around me. Did I really think about what I really want? They regret and they acknowledge that when they have to die, then do you think really you know what you really want? What if uh, ostrich, I can run faster than you are. So what is the point? Where are you going? This, this ostrich, just without knowing why, just want to prove that I can run faster than you. I mean, it's a bird. What is the point when you can run faster than a car? without having any destination, without having any purpose of that trip. Foolishness. But there are a lot of people who are like this out there. I can do this. They are ready to hurt their health and life. For what? Why are they doing this? Just to show off myself, just to draw the attention and get the just clap from the people. Stupid thing. There is no purpose in it. Is it worthy? There was a man that I respect. He's a businessman in South Korea. He's a founder of Hyundai Business Group. Hyundai Group takes 11% of national growth, national domestic product, 11% GDP. So it's a really worldwide renowned company. Interesting thing is businessman did most successful business, not for the money. So he, he always used to, I didn't do any business for the money. I mean, are we, aren't we doing business for the money? What kind of businessman is this who is not doing business? What is, what is it then he was doing business for? Yes? He has, Hyundai has the world largest shipbuilding world largest ship engine company. Like they did a lot of world largest, world first. But he says he did all this business, not for himself to earn money and become wealthy, but to make the country wealthy. I didn't start a shipbuilding business because it would look lucrative and promising. He says, somebody had to do it. We do not have industries and somebody had to do this shipbuilding business. So I started it. Somebody had to do motor car business but it is so risky, it requires too much investment. Somebody had to start it, so I did it. Not because it looked possible, not because it looked profitable, but because 
we needed it in the country. So I did it for the country. You know, doing business for the money and doing business for the country is coming from completely two different motivations. Hyundai used to assemble motor car for Ford company in the United States. Ford design and send all the parts to Hyundai. Hyundai used to assemble it and send it back to the United States. And some part of it, Hyundai used to sell it in the domestic market. Hyundai used to do successful business with that. One day, Mr. Chung wanted to develop our own Hyundai car, our own model, our own technology. Ford didn't like it. No, 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 no. Mr. Chung, you are not ready for that. We will give you everything and we'll buy and we will give you sufficient profit. And you sell it. You sell our car in the domestic market. But if you develop your own car, then you will end up making your own car and our four car compete each other in your domestic market. That's not what, what you want. That's not what we expected from our partner. So if you insist to develop your own car, then we'll have to pull our, por our own uh, portion. Half. Okay, if that is it, let's divorce then. At that moment, the US ambassador, new US ambassador came to South Korea. This ambassador wanted to talk to this Mr. Chung. So the next day he came, he directly came down to meet Mr. Chung. Mr. Chung, as you know, car business is not that simple. Once you invest and produce car, you have to produce at least 50,000 car a year. You need a, like, a, like a business scale that, that supports you to maintain the business. But you cannot sell 50,000 car in the domestic market total volume of the car market in South Korea is 20,000. Where are you going to sell the rest, the 30,000 car? Unless we buy it from you? Mr. Chung, you are going to bankrupt all this business that you have been developing until now is going to collapse at one, one point. That's the risk you have. You know it. Mr. Chung was, sir, you are an ambassador. I'm a businessman. I can calculate. I know the risk. I know what I'm doing. I know it's going, it can make all my business turn into ruin. So why are you doing this? If I wait for another 10 years, will Ford allow me to have my own technology, my own model? No. It's endless story. Sometime in the future, it's supposed to happen. I think the time has come now. We have to start. I know. I started, I can bankrupt. But anyway, I started with just one bicycle. I'm ready to go back to one bicycle, rice delivery man. That's where I started. But this research center, this technician that has been making research, they are still here in Korea. Somebody else will take it over and start from where I stopped. And if he fail again, the next person is going to take it over and start from where we, the other person had to stop. Eventually, we will have our own technology. We will have our own car model, we'll produce it, we have to sell it to all over the world. 
freely without being restricted by Ford because South Korea needed. Interesting thing was, there was a Korean gentleman that followed the Korean, the US ambassador for interpretation. While this gentleman was translating for the ambassador, he was shedding tears. While he was shedding tears, after finishing all the conversation, when the ambassador was going back, he directly said, ambassador, bye-bye. And he was telling Mr. Chung, Mr. Chung, now I realized with what kind of heart you are doing business. Can I work for you? I want to be together with you. That was how people gathered around him. That was where they were working day and night, not just to be successful in their business, but for the much higher and greater cause. And they can never be regret. They can never be satisfied because they earn some money. And they can be still proud of themselves, their life, to their children and their descendants and to themselves. And Hyundai Motor Company factory in Ulsan city there is the world largest the factory as a, just one unit. It has very unique things that many other car factory wants to uh, learn and steal from that, that factory. Anyway, like we have a certain uh, like a medical volunteer program. So we recruit uh, doctors and nurses and send them to Africa or Haiti every year like that. And our, our medical volunteer program is a little bit different from other volunteer program. We harsh them. We, <laughs> we let them work really hard from eight o'clock in the morning until six o'clock in the evening. They don't do it like that normally. They let them do service work like from uh, like nine to uh, three o'clock in the afternoon and let them relax in a luxurious hotel like that. But we let them work really, really hard. But interesting thing is many of the medical professionals, they love this program more because they can afford a luxurious uh, resort for their tour, for their vacation. They can afford it. If they wanted like a, a resort, they would, they would go to the resort. Why would they want to expect the touring, relaxing when they come for medical <laughs> volunteer program? So one of these doctor, this gentleman, he sends two container load of medical supplies every year. One container to the East Africa, Kenya, the other container to the West Africa, to Ghana. And he fly in the summer and spend entire summer. Of course, he shut down his, his uh, clinic and he take vacation spend vacation in Africa. And he spent all two container loads of medical supply curing the people there, of course, free. And he says he's really, really happy doing that. He cannot wait for another, the next year for this volunteer program. One year, when he was about to finish all this volunteer journey, he found a young boy that has a problem on his shoulder that needs operation. But anesthetics has already finished. He didn't have any more of it. But he couldn't just um, send him away. So he called one of his assistant and hold him tight. And then he started to cut his shoulder. Of course, without anesthetics, would it be painful? Boy was crying, crying, screaming, and doctor was sweating. He cut 
and it was taking off and stitching it. So I think, hold on, it's almost done. And he finally finished his operation without anesthetics. When it finished, the boy was almost exhausted. <laughs> he couldn't even cry loud. That moment, the boy and the mother and the doctor, all three of them were hugging together, shedding tears. He says he was really, really happy. He has, this was why I became doctor. Didn't I become a doctor to cure the people who need it? He spent 11 months in the clinic treating the other patients, but he was not that happy. But when he treated this young boy, he was really, he says he was happier than when he bought his first Mercedes. Why? That was the reason that he became a doctor. Sometimes, in order to do what you really want, we have to make a long journey. Road is rough, sometimes far. And sometimes it's dangerous. Can we really make it? Sometimes there are a lot of obstacles. If you are not sure if you can make it, still we, we couldn't stop because it is worthy. It is something that you cannot give up easily. But sometimes you have to hold and stop when it's necessary in order to continue to reach to the final destination. And there's one reason that we can never stop when the reason we have to make this trip has good reason, worthy all of all this risk. If we have, like I ask young, young child, if you have, if somebody gives you 500 US dollar, what would you do with that? Yeah, maybe I would buy AirPod, um, I would buy uh, something that I wanted. Yeah, you will spend it like that. But if you buy any chance, if you get 500,000 US dollar, are you going to just spend it for this and that, this and that, this and that, and waste it? No. Then what would you do? I will keep it safe in order to spend for something very, very precious and something very, very important. Yes. What do you think your life is like? Is your life worthy of $50? You waste it. Is your life worthy of $500? You waste it. What if your life is worthy of $2 million, $20 million, priceless? Are you going to waste it doing things that, that is not much precious, important? Or are you going to do it, spend it for something very, very valuable? If you spend $10,000 for something that is worthy of $100,000, you will be really, really happy. What are you going to do with your life? When you spend your life for something that is really, really valuable, when you are sure of it, that's where you obtain all the strength that you can overcome the desire that is in front of you. You can obtain all the strength and cause that you can overcome all the obstacles, difficulties, because it's worthy of it. When we play soccer, the so holding our hands inside the pocket, like, then we can never enjoy the soccer. When you play soccer, we have to run with all might. <laughs> <coughs> 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 
it's really hard, but when the ball comes again, then you have to run again. That is how we are supposed to play soccer. And then you got the ball. Yes, go! That is how we enjoy soccer. When you find something really, really valuable enough, that's where we will be able to spend our life with assurance, with great energy. And we'll be happy and be satisfied. We can be a great, great hero in the world that everybody may respect and recognize. But when we are doing really precious things, important things that we know, then we don't have to be famous. We don't have to be respected. We don't have to be recognized by many other people around us. We can do something invisible where people are not aware. Still, we can be proud of what we are doing. We can be satisfied because we know it is worthy. Your life, every single one of you are really, really precious persons to you, yourself, and to the people around you, and to the society that you belong. There is a certain movie. It was a man who was a superman. <laughs> a gentleman is wrapping a red cloth around his neck, running up and down. Does he look like a superman or he looks like a psycho? <laughs> Does he look like real superman? <laughs> no, no. It's a South Korean movie. This man is not real, is not a real <laughs> superman, as a matter of fact. But actually, he, this, uh, this lady is a, a reporter, but she found this man strange. He's a, like a bit strange man, but he jumped into everywhere that uh, people need help. When a grandmother is crossing the road and he stopped all the traffic to take this grandmother uh, to cross the road. And he threw himself to save uh, like children from a vehicle on the road and he helped many people. So he sacrifices himself jumping in there and here and like, and he said he claims to be Superman. Then why, why, how come Superman is like this? Uh, because the villain put a kryptonite in my brain. That's why um, I cannot, I cannot have that power I used to have, but I'm surely a Superman like that. As a matter of fact, this man was not true, was not a true Superman. His name was um, uh, Kyung Sok Lee, a uh, gentleman who had his wife and a girl. But one day while he was driving with his wife and a girl, a drunken driver hit him, his car. So his car turned over and he barely escaped from the car, but his wife and the, his daughter was stuck in the car. He was struggling to pull his wife and a car, but people were surrounding, they were just watching. He was crying, crying, help, help. But nobody was approaching because the gas was leaking already. So he was struggling to pull his wife without any help. And eventually the car exploded. That was when he went beside himself. He went crazy. Since that day, he was living like Superman. Superman running up and down, saving all the people who were in difficulties. When the movie was about to finish, <clears throat> he saw a building, about four-story building, and a girl, a very young girl at his daughter's age was uh, like trapped. And he goes into that building. And 
he reaches to the room where the girl was, but he realized he and girl cannot escape. So he goes to the window, he holds this girl and fall backward. And that is how he killed himself to save the life of the girl. That is how he died. And the movie finish. And the movie scroll, the credit, credit scrolls up. The credit says, his real name was Kyung Suk Lee. And he lived as Kyung Suk Lee for 29 years. And he lived a life as a Superman for two years. But while he was living as a Superman, he saved life of 17 persons. So while he was in sound mind, he was just living for himself. But while he was crazy, living as a Superman, he saved 17 persons life. I don't know which one is real sound mind. I don't know which one was real valuable life. We don't have to be a Superman, each and every one of us. But there are kind of lives that you can do something more meaningful around us. There are a lot of programs that IYF has for the people, remote native people in Canada, Northern Canada. Many of the children commit suicide because of loneliness, stuck inside there. There is no road. Only by airplane, somebody can go in and out. But we volunteers go there, just become their friends. Many of them so happy, obtained the joy and happiness. They could overcome the darkness and different challenges, depressions. You can be a part of this. And when, at least when we are sure we are doing something that is valuable, meaningful enough, we can never fail being happy and be satisfied. As a matter of fact, uh, I could enjoy and doing a lot of work in Jamaica. I had a chance to talk to a lot of government officials, teachers, guidance counselors of entire country have been training them parish by parish because we couldn't do at once for two years. And like giving lectures in the police academy. But above all these things, it was not because I was doing something great in front of famous people, great people, but the kind of heart that I was able to share with others. And like, not because I am well recognized or respected, not because I'm getting paid very well, living luxurious life, but because I have been, um, spending my life for something that is far more valuable than my own life. That is why I could be happy. I could encourage everyone that I meet uh, to find that happiness and joy by finding out what you really want and be somebody that you will never be shameful to yourself, to your children, at the end of your life. Because it was all worthy of it. Thank you very much. Um, today's session was very uh, thought provoking. Um, today, actually, as I was listening, um, made me to think one more time about my purpose. So uh, as I started to live my life, I st st stopped thinking about this fact, like what is the purpose of my life? And uh, today, as I uh, listened to the lecture, that it also made me to think what is my true purpose of my life. And uh, 
true purpose of my life defeats all my desires also so i was able to discover today that uh, fact like the the uh, the hyundai owner jung so he was able to leave true purpose when i heard the story i also felt shed sh- shed tear in my eyes so i was able to see that how this kind of heart he is able to possess inside of him uh, to think about the nation his heart is so broad and and he's uh, he did not he did not think about how to be successful how to make money but in stop that he truly he, uh, he he wanted to leave for others and they found the true uh, purpose in his life to make the uh, korea great nation it was really good so when i saw that i was able to see that um, to also made me to think what i really wanted to do in my life so it helps also make me to think more deeply about this fact and matter so today's session was very uh, wonderful i would say thank you so much sir for coming down and uh, presenting this I, I i i wish i could listen more but i am not sure whether you will be able to come here but i i, I really want to uh, listen one more time your lectures thank you so much sir thank you thank you yeah okay okay uh thank you very much sir uh, <coughs> really uh, we are very lucky to hear uh, your lecture today um so uh, i just wanted to ask you uh, like how you became a hero for yourself can you share some kind of anecdote from your life from your own life like uh, what is your ultimate aim and you know how uh, how did that uh, help you to overcome your desire any any some kind of short incident or something like that um actually i i grew up a very poor and before my father bankrupted i used to uh shameful to say this but i used to look at uh, those people who are living in the ghetto uh despising them ah these poor people they have reason that they have to live like that they are lazy and they are uh living a thoughtless life but after my father bankrupted and i had to live in a ghetto area sometimes living in a tent sometimes living in a cave and digging up the garbage bins and like that then i growing up i had to think about this matter a lot what am i doing what am i going to do with my life i was thinking about that matter long time but i was not able to get the answer for that long time but that was how i yeah struggled to graduate university as a matter of fact when i was about when i was in the university i learned about that mr chung of hyundai so yes this is it so i joined with him when i graduated university i worked for him for 9 years so i enjoyed my life uh, working with hyundai for 9 years and i was happy for a while but uh i realized uh there must be something more valuable than that but uh my dream was that i wanted to be somewhere really people really want because Mr. Chung could um, make uh, South Korea like wealthier and better physically, but still people remain miserable instead of their heart getting wealthier. So there must be something that can uh, like uh, bring a satisfaction change in the heart of the youngsters, and I. I was thinking of that life but I was not sure if my wife would uh follow me uh living that life but one day I eventually uh uh decided to go to Jamaica but surprisingly uh my wife uh followed me and I I think my wife and I both of us uh at first one year in Jamaica we suffered a lot because we couldn't understand them and most probably most mostly they were 
despising the Oriental people a lot. Sometimes they were spitting on, spitting on my wife like that, like saying all kinds of obscene, lustful joke, thinking that you don't understand what they were saying. And then I couldn't take it inside of my heart, I struggled. But then I, after one year, I started to realize, ah, oh, like this was what we are supposed to go through naturally. And I could uh, imagine what uh, they would be like after they opened their hearts. So, uh, like, when we look back, both my wife and I say, the 20 years that we spent in Jamaica was the happiest moment of our life. Of course, I spent the golden time of my life there, but I, I never regret. And still, I get a lot of uh, like uh, text messages and email and uh, from those people there. Um, here I'm in Dallas, but people complain that I talk too much about Dallas here and <laughs> talk too much about Jamaica, uh, like that. But uh, the reason I am so happy there was because, like, ninety percent of Jamaican people are living with like a single, single, single mother a broken family. So they could hardly open their hearts to somebody else. And like they, from the birth, their mother had to go somewhere to earn money. Then they are asked, like the, the ladies are asking her brother, her mother, grandmother, or somebody else to take care of the baby. So. They are growing up with different siblings and um, they can hardly be sure if this person really loved me. If they grew up with mother, then that is the basic, basic uh, privilege of a child that uh, trusts somebody that really cares. That is mother, basically, but they couldn't even have somebody like that. So their hearts are extremely uh, deserted, dry. And if we deal with them uh, from the heart uh, a little bit, and then they don't know how to manage this. And they react sometimes very violently or hurting our heart. So at first I couldn't understand, but I could understand uh, that's how that now they have no other way but to react. But as they open their heart, like, uh, we find out what is the real inside of them. And that is how life of the people are changing. Now they grew up and uh, they are having children like that. And just by looking at them, I'm really thankful that I could spend my life there. And um, I don't know, uh, something that I need to do more here in the last, <laughs> yeah. In, on, on the other side, you know, one of the wealthiest country in the world, I can see the youngsters have more problem that, uh, than people in Jamaica. I think that's why I'm here. Thank you. <laughs>